Hello everyone, and welcome to this new video tutorial for Maverick Indie. In this tutorial we will talk about importing substance designer materials in Maverick. All the materials used in this tutorial were downloaded from the Substance Source Material Repository. We encourage you to register to Substance Source, as it provides exceptional quality materials to use with Maverick. The materials that will be presented in this video were created by Daniel Thigger and Ben Wilson, two very talented material artists. Be sure to check out their ArtStation page. Let's go and see how it works. Up here in the main toolbar you will find the Substance Designer button. Like with Substance Painter, simply double-click on any texture from the set to import. The Substance Designer importer invites you to select an ambience for your material. Select one that you like and click Next. The next window allows you to configure the way your material imports. The default settings are perfect in most cases. Make sure displacement is enabled. We will see later how we can change the quality and height. Proceed with the import. Maverick now creates our render, by applying the material and generating displacement. Here is our material, entirely configured. Before editing, we recommend switching the render preset to ultrafast plus denoiser, for better interactivity. This cliff material would probably look better with higher displacement. We can increase the displacement height, to create a stronger elevation. To do so, select the object and click the object properties icon from the viewport toolbar. We can also go to the objects panel, and select our object from the list. This has the same effect and displays the object properties in the attributes panel. Let's increase the displacement height to 3 cm. Our material is already significantly nicer. Let's see how you can change the illumination easily. From the lighting library, go to the ambiences tab and select the material subcategory. Simply drag and drop one, to change the lighting. Remember from previous videos you can rotate the environment holding the control and shift keys, and using the right mouse button. Let's drop some more ambiences. It's really easy to change the mood and create light setups that make your material shine. Now we will learn how we can control the displacement quality. This material has significant height differences and requires a bit more subdivision to go from good to great. This process can be made much easier by using a wireframe material from the miscellaneous category, to visualize the displaced mesh quality. This material displays the actual polygons and triangles to help appreciate the level of subdivision. Let's increase the displacement quality, by reducing the maximum edge length parameter in the render panel, from 2 to 1. You can see the displacement quality has instantly improved. These two toggles are very important to keep memory usage as low as possible, and performance as high as possible. Cull Hidden ignores objects invisible to the camera, while Cull Backside prevents the backfacing parts of an object to receive as much subdivision as the camera facing side. If we get closer, create a new camera here, and press the Reload Subdivision and Displacement button, you can see that the displacement has been limited to what the camera actually sees. This is thanks to those two toggles we just talked about. Alright, let's go back to our main camera, and reload Displacement and Subdivision. We can now apply our desert cliff material again. We can also create a turntable animation. It is important to disable cull back side, or the turntable will reveal an insufficient subdivision level at the back of our sphere. Let's go to the turntable animation module. Be sure to check the dedicated tutorial, the link is available at the top right corner of this video and in the description below. We can rotate the objects only, and preview the animation.
We can also rotate the environment and the lights, and preview the animation interactively again. From there we would only have to click next, and select an output path to save our animation. But this has been covered in depth already, so we will skip it and create another material. We will use this really cool lumber tiles material created by Ben Wilson. Double click any texture and select an ambience. Leave the import parameters at their default values. And here is our Maverick render showing this very nice material. There again you can drag and drop ambiences to change the lighting. We will configure the engine to ultra fast plus denoiser once again. Now we will learn another way to set up the displacement quality. Getting closer we can see that this material has a lot of hard edges, requiring a much finer subdivision. Let's apply a wireframe material again. The starting point is still the same, reduce the max length parameter, for example to 1. The overall quality has increased and you can see quite a few more polygons have been generated. But a lot of polygons are wasted on relatively flat areas. Fortunately we can improve that a lot. Select the object and go to its properties. There you will find an adaptive option, enable it. And now the flat areas are much less subdivided than the edges, saving memory, processing and rendering time. This also allows us to increase the displacement quality further, without over subdividing the object. Go ahead and lower the max length to 0.6, adaptive will take a few seconds to compute. The edges are now much finer, but the flat areas have been kept reasonably subdivided. We can apply the original material back again. The edges are still not perfect, so we can lower the max length even more. For example to 0.3. This will take a few seconds. The quality is now excellent. The edges are well defined, and the material looks gorgeous. Let's reset the camera position, and apply the wireframe material again to see the subdivision globally. And our material again. It looks really great. With such a fine subdivision, you can get pretty close and still get astonishing quality. Let's create a camera here and reload the subdivision and displacement. As previously seen, with cull hidden and especially cull backside in this case, subdivision has now been constrained to what the camera sees. Remember to use this technique for close-ups, it allows you to reach extremely high displacement quality while saving GPU memory. Let's add some depth of field, and focus by holding the control and shift keys and clicking anywhere we want using the left mouse button. You can easily control depth of field from the camera by changing the aperture value, just like a real camera. We can also change our illumination interactively with Lightmixer. With Lightmixer engaged, you can change your lighting without rendering again. You can solo light sources one by one for example. You can mute or edit every light source intensity in real time.
Once done you can consolidate every change back to the actual scene lights. Let's see another example. We will try a nice organic material, like this clustered in fluorescence, from Ben Wilson. We select an ambience again, accept the Deto parameters and proceed. And here is our material rendering, with displacement and textures all set up properly. We will enable the ultrafast plus denoiser preset, again. We will also change the displacement height a little. Select the object, click the Object Properties button, and increase the height to 2. This gives the material a nice blobby look. Let's check our mesh quality using the wireframe material again. The result is good but not perfect, so let's increase the subdivision quality, by lowering the max length parameter from the render panel again. Now with our original material it looks as good as it gets. As usual we can rotate the lights, render a turntable animation, and so on. Let's check yet another material. This concrete triangles for example. Double click any texture, select an ambience and accept the importer defaults again. Our material is already all configured. Let's apply an interesting ambience for this particular material. This one looks great. As usual let's configure our displacement quality, by getting closer to inspect it, and apply a wireframe material to visualize the subdivision result. This material has hard edges and flat areas, so we will enable the adaptive option to create a finer subdivision only where it's needed. The density looks good but let's see with our material again. We need to increase the quality a little more, by reducing the max length parameter in the render panel. The material now looks absolutely perfect. We will get closer again to create a close-up shot. Create a camera when you are pleased with your angle of view, and reload subdivision and displacement. You can check again the subdivision was properly adapted to the camera view, quickly switching between the material and the wireframe preset. As the subdivision now applies to a smaller area, we can increase the quality, from example go from our current value of 0.8 to 0.5. Wait a couple of seconds for the displacement to compute. Now let's add some depth of field to create a nice close-up. Use the Control Shift and left mouse button, or the Quad Menu Autofocus option to set your focus point. You can apply some styling to the render using one of the tone mapping preset, such as the high contrast one, or a post-production one. And now we have a very nice material presentation render. We hope you enjoyed this video and will put this amazing feature to great use. Feel free to share your work on our social media, which links are in the description below. Thank you for watching this video. Have fun rendering with Maverick.